Okay, here's the first part of the lesson for section 1.5, solving quadratic equations for the grade 11 functions course. Uh, the first part, I'm going to teach you how to solve quadratics by factoring. Um, you would have learned this in grade 10, but this is just a quick review, and I'm going to hopefully show you a nice trick uh, for long factoring that you may not already know, um, that I'll save you some time. Uh, and then part two of the lesson, which I'll post later, is going to be on solving using the quadratic formula, which you would have also done in grade 10, but this time um, I'll teach you how to leave your answer as exact expressions and simplify using the rules you know how to work with radicals. All right, so just a quick reminder. When you're solving a quadratic by factoring, solving means to find the x-intercepts, and to find the x-intercepts or to solve a quadratic, the quadratic has to be in standard form, and it has to be set equal to zero. So that means sometimes you may have to rearrange before you solve. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, you'll probably remember from grade 10, when factoring a quadratic, um, there's two scenarios. Scenario 1, the coefficient of the x squared is a 1, and generally that um, is the easiest type of quadratic to factor. Um, you can usually go right to your answer once you find the appropriate product and sum. The harder type is when the coefficient of the x squared is not 1. We'll do a couple of those examples too, and I'll show you a shortcut um, that will hopefully help you with that. So for this one, if we want to find um, the factors, if we want to factor um, this quadratic, the reason why we're going to factor is because once it's factored, we can then solve for the x-intercept. So if we're going to factor this, we have to find two numbers that have a product of 56 and a sum of our b term, negative 15. So the two numbers that multiply to give us positive 56 and add to give us negative 15 are negative 8 and negative 7. Negative 8 times negative 7 is 56. Negative 8 plus negative 7 is negative 15. So those are our two numbers. So we can go right to our factors now. Um, our factors are x minus 8 times x minus 7. You just take the two numbers that satisfy your product and sum, put them into factors being added to x. So x plus negative 8, which is just x minus 8, and then x minus 7. And keep in mind, we're going to set this equal to 0. We're setting the y-coordinate to 0 because we're solving for the x-intercepts. And if you think about a graph, wherever it crosses the x-axis, it's going to be on the x-axis, so the y-coordinate of that point is going to be 0. So we set y to 0. Now we use the zero product rule and solve for x. We solve for what values of x could make this product equal to 0. So for that times that to be 0, Either this has to have a value of 0, or that has to have a value of 0. So x minus 8 could be equal to 0, or x minus 7 could be equal to 0. And now solve for what value of x makes those equations true. So for this equation, x could be 8. For this one, x could be 7. So our x-intercepts are 8, 0, and 7, 0. Those are the two places this quadratic would cross the x-axis at 8 and 7, so at 0 0.80 and 0 0.70. Let's do another example. Well, we'll do two more where the coefficient, well, one more where the coefficient is 1, and then another one where we can common factor it out. But for part B here, once again, we have a quadratic. The coefficient of A is 1. And I've given us a little bit of a new setup here. I'm going to show you this new setup um, because it's going to help you when you're going to do the um, factoring of a quadratic when A is not 1. But, so we'll start using it now. So <clears throat> we're going to need to find two numbers who have a product of our c value, so a product of 6 and a sum of our b value, which is negative 5. The two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 5, I'm going to put them here and here, are negative 2 and negative 3. And then you just take these two numbers, put them <clears throat> into factors being added to x. So, and keep in mind we're going to set the quadratic equal to 0, because we're finding the x-intercepts, and the y-coordinate of all x-intercepts is 0, goes to x minus 2 times x minus 3. Now, using the zero product rule, we can have two possible answers, set both of the factors equal to 0, and solve. So x minus 2 could be 0, and x minus 3 could be 0. So I have one x-intercept at 2, and then another x-intercept, I'll call it x2, at 3. So x-intercept 1 is at 2, so 0 0.20, and my second x-intercept is at 3, so 0 0.30. Let's do another example. This example is here just to remind you that you always have to look for a common factor. 
before you go factoring the quadratic. So hopefully you notice we have the coefficients of all three terms are even numbers, so I can for sure take out a 2 from all of the terms. So take out a 2, put it out front, and divide each of those three terms by the 2 we took out and put it in brackets. So that gives me x squared minus 4x minus 21. Now, inside the brackets, I have a quadratic that has a coefficient of 1 in front of the x squared. I can factor it the short way once again. So I just have to find two numbers with a product of my c value, so a product of negative 21 and the sum of my b value, negative 4. The two numbers that do that are negative 7 and 3. Negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. Negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. <clears throat> so that works out. So set equal to 0. Factor the quadratics in brackets here by taking my two numbers, negative 7 and 3, putting them in brackets, um, being added to an x value. So x plus negative 7 is x minus 7, and x plus 3. Now, using the zero product rule for the product to be 0, this has to be equal to 0, or that has to be equal to 0, and get your two x-intercepts. So x minus 7 could be 0, or x plus 3 could be 0. So my first x-intercept is at 7, so 0 0.70. And my second x-intercept is at negative 3, so point negative 3, 0. Okay, let's go ahead and remind you of how to factor quadratics when the a value is not 1. Here's the steps. If you want, pause your video, read the steps. Um, I'm actually going to show you a shorter way than this, but I'll remind you of this. This is probably the way you were taught in grade 10. So the way you were taught in grade 10, what you would have done is you would have found two numbers that have a product of a times c. So in this case, a product of 8 times negative 15 would be negative 120, and a sum of your middle term, 2. I should remind you that you always should have checked for a common factor first, but there is no common factor between 8, 2, and 15, so I couldn't take anything out. So we have to factor it the long way. We find a product of two numbers that have, we find two numbers that have a product of 8 times negative 15, so a product of negative 120, and a sum of your middle term, your b value of 2. And the two numbers that do that <clears throat> are um, 12 and negative 10. 12 times negative, 20, negative 10 is negative 120. 12 plus negative 10 is 2. So what you would have done in grade 10 with these two numbers, what you would have done is you would have broken up your middle term into 12x minus 10x. Why? Because 12x minus 10x is 2. And 12 and negative 10 are the two numbers that satisfy our product and sum. You then would have put back in your first term and your last term and it's still equal to 0. <clears throat> Notice that this expression is equivalent to the top one because 12 minus 10 is 2. That's why we're allowed to do that. And now you would have factored by group, and you would put the first two terms in brackets. You would have put the last two terms in brackets, and you would have separated with an addition sign. And then you would have common factored each group, and then factored by grouping. So common factor this group, you could take out a 4x, and divide both of these by the 4x you took out, 2x plus 3. This one you could take out a negative 5, divide both by the negative 5 you took out, and once again you have 2x plus 3. You have a common binomial, you can take out the common binomial, put it out front. Once we take out the common binomial from both terms, we're left with 4x minus 5 as our second factor. And then zero product rule says set each of your factors equal to 0, and solve for x, and we get the two solutions to the quadratic, so we get the two x-intercepts. If you solve this for x, move the 3, it becomes negative 3, then divide the 2. Your first x-intercept is at negative 3 over 2. Your second x-intercept, move the negative 5 over, becomes 5, divide by 4. You get, for your second x-intercept, 5 over 4. Now, that is a very long way to factor that quadratic. Let me show you a much faster way. Okay, so I'm going to backtrack. We're going to do all of this in one step. So, well, I guess maybe not one or two steps. You're going to start off the same way. You're going to find two numbers who have a product of 8 times negative 15, and that's negative 120. 
and a sum of the middle term, 2. And we already found those two numbers. You're going to find those two numbers the same way, but there's going to be one major difference with what we're going to put here. So the two numbers that satisfy the product and sum were 12 and negative 10. What you're going to do now, however, is you're going to, with both of these numbers, you're going to divide them both by whatever the a value is. So 12 over 8 and negative 10 over 8. What we're going to do now is rewrite this here with the um, fractions simplified. So it was negative 120, um, 2. And I'm going to simplify both of these fractions. 12 over 8, well, 4 goes into both of those. It goes into 12 3 times, into 8 2 times. So I'm going to rewrite that as 3 over 2. And I'm going to rewrite this one. 2 goes into both of those um, as negative 5 over 4. <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we can go right to our answer simply by <clears throat> in brackets we're going to go right to our final answer or our final factored form answer we'll then set them both to 0 and solve but all we have to do is in brackets the denominator so this is going to be in the first brackets there 3 over 2 how we're going to write it in the denominator is going to be the coefficient of the x, so it's going to be 2x, and then the numerator is the number added to it, so 2x plus 3. This fraction, the denominator, is the coefficient of x, so 4x, the numerator is the number added to it, so plus negative 5 or minus 5. Then you set both of the factors equal to 0 and solve. You get, once again, negative 3 over 2 and 5 over 4. So that was our first x-intercept, that was our second x-intercept. Same answer, much more efficient way of doing it, much faster. Let's do another one, just to show you that it works. First of all, remember when solving quadratic, you must set it equal to 0. So I need to move that negative 15 or it becomes a plus 15. Now I need to find 2 to a product of, well first of all, check for a common factor. 2 doesn't go into 11 or 15. We can't take out a common factor, so we're going to have to factor it the long way, which we discovered on the last example isn't actually that long. So we define two numbers who have a product of 2 times 15, so a product of 30, and a sum of negative 11. Sorry, it looks like a 36, kind of. Okay, the two numbers that multiply to 30 and add to negative 11 are negative 6 and negative 5. Negative 6 times negative 5 is 30. Negative 6 plus negative 5 is negative 11. And hopefully you remember from the last time what I'm going to do with these two numbers, the negative 6 and the negative 5. Instead of breaking up the middle term, factoring by grouping and so on, I'm just going to write both of those numbers over the a value, over 2, and it was negative 5, over 2. Now simplify both of those fractions. So I'm going to rewrite this with the fractions simplified. Negative 6 over 2, I can simplify just to negative 3, because negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 5 over 2, we can't simplify. Now I can go right to my factors. Um, this is going to be my first factor. So it's just going to be x minus 3. And my next factor, the denominator is the coefficient of the x. The numerator is added to it. So 2x plus negative 5, or 2x minus 5. There we go. It's factored in one step, nice and simple. Now, to get your actual solution, set both of your factors to 0 and solve. So my first x-intercept is at 3, and my next one, move the negative 5 over, divide the 2. My second x-intercept is at 5 over 2, or 0.5 over 2, 0. Keep in mind, these x-intercepts are points, 3, 0, and 2, and a half, 0. Okay, we're going to do... One more example, just kind of tying in everything you know about quadratics. I'll do this one quickly. Um, for this quadratic, part A, find the roots of the quadratic. Roots, that's another word for solutions or x-intercepts. So I'm going to set it equal to 0 and solve. Whenever you're solving quadratic, set it equal to 0. Um, also, for this one, this is another good reminder. You always have to check for a common factor before factoring the quadratic. So in this case, I can take out a 2 from all of the numbers, which will then make it an easy quadratic to factor. 
So I get x squared minus 2x minus 8. I've divided all three of the terms by the two I took out. Now inside the brackets, I have a, quad I have a quadratic with a coefficient of 1. So I can factor it the short way. Find two numbers who have a product of negative 8 and a sum of negative 2. Those two, two numbers that do that are negative 4 and 2. So my factors are 2 times x minus 4 times x plus 2. If I want my solutions, I set both of my factors with an x in it equal to 0. And then solve both equations. My first x-intercept is at 4. My second x-intercept is at negative 2. The next part of the question asks us to find the axis of symmetry. That's the vertical line that passes through the vertex um, of the quadratic. To find that, the equation for the axis of symmetry, you just have to add your x-intercepts and divide by 2. So the equation of the axis of symmetry is just x equals 4 plus negative 2 divided by 2. 4 plus negative 2 is 2, so 2 over 2. So x equals 1. It's a vertical line that passes through 1. <coughs> so the vertex must have an x-coordinate of 1. So if I want to then find the vertex of the quadratic, well, I know the x-coordinate of the vertex is the same as the equation of um, the axis of symmetry. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is equal to 1. If I want the y-coordinate of the vertex, I just have to take that x-coordinate and plug it back into my original equation of the quadratic to solve what y is equal to when x is 1. And that will tell me where the vertex is at. So 2x squared minus 4x. I believe it was minus 16. Yep. And then just plug in 1 for x. 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 minus 16. So I get 2 times 1 squared. That's 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 4 times 1, which is 4, minus 16. And then I get 2 minus 4 is negative 2, minus 16 is negative 18. So my vertex is at... 1, negative 18, and since the quadratic has a positive a value, that means it opens up, which means the vertex is at the very bottom of the parabola, which means it is a minimum point. So this is a minimum point. Okay, that's it for that lesson. That hopefully reviews with you how to solve quadratics by factoring. Like I said, um, if you want to re recap on how to solve using the quadratic formula, uh, watch the next, next lesson that I post.